Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you something really cool. We made a fully automatic self-sustainable tree farm. So fully automatic means the player doesn't need to do anything like placing fungus or breaking blocks. Machine does it all. And self-sustainable means we don't need to supply any bone meal because the machine produces it itself. And that of course uses the new mechanic was added in the snapshot that we can now compost those nether ward blocks. So basically you generate a tree, compost most of the nether ward blocks and get bone meal back so I can grow a new tree. Alright, so here we are on the Cycroft snapshot server. Yesterday there was a 12 hour session designing the farm. A couple of people worked on it. We had methods helping, process, NLS and also Kate Ender. Kate Ender also released some crimson and warped fungus tree farms on his channel already. So also check that out. There's a link in the video description. All right, I just want to show you a little bit of the progress we made. So we started over here in this area and slowly after a bit of brainstorming, the farm took shape. First we thought maybe we'll only do it 11 high. So it's a bit less effort, but then we went for the full height of the farm. So 27 high is the highest uh, the fungus tree could generate. And then we went through several iterations of the farm, always improved some things, changed it up. Some of the modules also broke and we cloned it over and over again. And after a little bit of journey, we will arrive at the working version. So you are the swamp biome, I think then here it splits up <laughs> and we got a couple of failed versions until we should arrive at the one with the nice house next to it. That NLS build, yep, that's the working version. I'll just turn on the farm and try to explain things as they're happening. So the first thing we do is we bone meal the middle Nylio block once. Then we check if we get a fungus and try to bone meal it and grow it into a tree. All right, let's do it. In case it fails and we also have yeah, alternative program. Okay, this time we didn't get a fungus. We only get the other nether plants, so mostly roots, also a wrong fungus type, and we flushed it away. Then we try again. We bone meal one block in the middle. This time we actually got twisting vines. All right, now this happened. Uh, this actually doesn't happen very often, but it's also not an issue. Okay, now the whole piston wall starts and we dispense some TNT. Um, this is a clear case of the showcase effect. I'll just tick warp real quick so we can see maybe a tree growing. That's what we came here for. Okay, at the top we got TNT system. Try to explain it a bit later. And there we go. This time it worked. We got a tree. Okay, then we got this piston wall here, pushing the whole tree over uh, so we can blow it up with the TNT system here at the top that was designed by K. Dender. All right, so we blow it up from bottom to top so the items can fall down. Sometimes we lose a couple of items because they land on blocks lower, but we should get most of them. And we also have to, yeah, dispense TNT to cover it up to 27 blocks high. That's the maximum height a tree can grow to. Uh, we also discussed if you only maybe should yeah, limit it to a height of 12 or 13 or so, because most of the trees would only grow uh, to this height. There's only like a 1 in 12 chance that the tree, uh, that the tree would grow higher than that. Um, but in the end, we decided to just uh, break all the blocks in order to get a maximum amount of bone meal back. All right, so yeah, now we're trying to grow the next fungus. This time it didn't work. The nether plants are flushed and also uh, get collected by the water stream here. And this time we actually got a really high tree. This is a maximum height, almost 25 high. So that's why we also need to dispense TNT up till there because y you never know how high the tree can grow. Uh, we have some plans or ideas how to do a tree height detection, but we just wanted to get a working version first. Right, so the items that are broken get collected by the water stream here at the bottom. And then we sort out the locks and shroom light blocks with item filters there. And all the rest is going into the composter. So all the ward blocks and also the yeah the plants we get from bone milling nylium. And yeah, we get actually more bone meal out than we put in. So here we feed the bone meal back to the dispensers to try to grow the fungus and bone meal the nylium. The, pl uh, the plus we make is collected by this hopper here. That's just a wool block so we can yeah, check how much we actually get using carpet mod. 
We also ran a longer test in order to figure out how many items we get approximately per hour. So over 1000 minutes of testing and we're getting around 136 room lights per hour and 500 warped stem blocks. The results for the crimson variant are pretty much the same. So we also get the same amount of shroom lights and warped stems, but a bit less bow meal. So with the warped variant, we get 225 bow meal per hour, with crimson a bit less. I think the reason is that if a crimson fungus tree generates that some of the warped blocks are replaced by the weeping vine. Uh, and this way we get fewer warped blocks and fewer bow meal. There's also a disadvantage uh, when using the warped nylium. We've seen it right in the beginning, we grew some twisting vines. That's something that very rarely happens, um, but yeah, it's also wasting some bone meal because you can actually bone meal the twisting vine. And this also interacts with the tree detection that we have. So if you don't get a fungus, then we just flush. But if you get a fungus, then we activate the piston wall. The way we detect if we have grown a fungus is by checking if we used bone meal. So we actually get two separate bone meal systems. The first line of hoppers feeds the dispenser. This is under the middle nylon block and the rest is hooked up to this hopper line here. This supplies all the dispensers with bone meal and also the hoppers in the back are filled. So if one of those dispensers can bone meal one of the fungus, then this hopper here for a short moment is not filled up completely, which we detect using the comparator here. And this way yeah, we can, can detect if a fungus tree has grown. And that then basically starts the flying piston wall and also the TNT system at the top. There's one more interesting topic we need to discuss. So not only is this farm fully automatic, so it doesn't require a player nearby, it actually only works if the player isn't nearby. The reason is the warped nylium or the crimson nylium can be converted back into Nazarek. So that happens if there's another block on top of it. And then if it's getting random ticked, it could turn into Nazarek. So similar like grass block turning into a dirt block. But this would only happen random tick based and those random ticks only happen in a certain radius around the player. This got changed in Microphone Point 0.9 there the random ticks happened in the complete random distance and now it's only a um, radius of approximately 128 blocks around the player. So actually in order to run the farm without issues, you would need to stand about 150 blocks away to be on a safe side. Um, so instead of turning it on directly here, it would be recommended to just have a yeah, red sun dust line 150 blocks away and safely turn it on from there. And this way you can basically prevent that the Nylium would ever turn into Nazarek. Of course, we were also discussing making a version that would deal with the um, Nylium conversion into Nazarek by converting it back into Nylium. So you can do that by bone milling a Nazarek. And if there's a Nylium block nearby in a 3v3 area, it would be converted back into Nylium. But there were some issues with that, which basically made the farm less efficient. We would have need to sacrifice um, yeah, one of the rows here in the middle and then it would be kind of a problem to also fit in uh, the additional dispensers that would bone mill the nylium either from the side or from the bottom. As you can see here at the bottom is already quite filled up with hoppers that would resupply all the dispensers and droppers there. Um, so we decided to use three rows of nylium instead and yeah have a version we just need to stand away. But it still works fine in case you, you, you do that. Um, it's actually so important to have three rows of nylium to get a maximum amount of fungus for the bone meal attempt on the nylium. If you would, for example, only have a single block, then you would need to bone meal up to 20 times, something that range until you finally get a fungus. So you would spend way more bone meal uh, and then you would get back. So ideally, of course, you would uh, have 25 nylium blocks uh, that we yeah, can get a fungus at and try to bone meal everything there. But yeah, the first working concept we had was with 15. We already have some ideas how we could actually do it with 25 to be even more bone meal efficient, but it will also have some downsides, of course. So I'm super happy, of course, that we finally have a working version. It took a lot of time to get there, but we also have some ideas how to improve the design. For example, instead of using the expandable two-way piston wall. We could also maybe try to design a custom solution that requires a bit less effort, 
advantage of this design here, this is infinitely expandable, so you can make it larger or smaller. Um, but if you make a custom one, it could be a bit less effort. Then, yeah, we also have some ideas how to do a tree height detection. But on the other hand, it's still in the snapshots and things are yeah changing all the time. For example, in previous snapshot versions, the fungus trees grew up to nine wide, uh, but in this version it's only seven wide. So a tree that would actually grow nine wide would be a problem for this farm, because if you would have a fungus on this end and on this end, and both of them generate seven blo uh, nine blocks in a row, there would be some overlap, but in total would have 13 blocks in a row, and the pistons obviously can only push 12, so the machine would break. Um, so we're kind of a bit careful now to not put too much effort into making the perfect form already because things are changing real quick and then yeah, that's one way to get burned out. If every snapshot your farm breaks one way or the other. So at the moment I'm super happy with this farm. In case 1.16 released and this concept is still working, I'm probably gonna show a bit better version and also provide a world download and maybe a tutorial. All right, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.